Welcome. All right, so what I want to do is show you how to uh, write the equation of the ellipse. Now, um, what we're provided is the foci and the vertices. And there's two different types of equations we could have. We can have x, um, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals 1. Now, remember, we could have a squared and b squared, or we could have b squared and a squared. And it all depends on where's the major axis. Is the major axis horizontal or is the major axis vertical? And we know where the major axis is um, based on where the vertices are. So if we find that if we know where the center is, and we say that the um, ver the vertices are horizontal across each other, then we know the major axis is horizontal, and therefore our a squared is going to be under the x. However, if our vertices are going to be vertical across from each other, then we could say that the a squared is going to look like this. So whenever I'm doing a problem, I need it to look like this. And I'm going to leave the a and b squareds alone for right now. I don't know what x, um, h, and k are as well. I'm going to wait. But um, whenever I'm provided information, I want to write the equation. The best thing I like to do is make the picture. Draw what you have, right? Remember like working on word problems and say, hey, just sketch it. Yeah, just draw what you have. There's nothing wrong with that. It's OK. We're just sketching the information we know. So they say the foci is negative 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the vertices are negative 8, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. OK. Foci, foci. Vertice, vertice. Now, I remember my conversation that I said, are the, if the vertices are across each other horizontally, then the a squared is under your x. If they're vertically, then the a squared is under your y. So we look at this and we say, all right, remember the vertices lie on the major axis. So looks like my major axis is my x-axis. Is this a horizontal or is it vertical? Obviously, it's horizontal, right? So we can say that my a squared is going to be under the x, and my b squared is going to be under the y, where b squared, remember, represents the distance from the center to the covertice, which is going to be up here or down. Um, OK, so now we need to remember exactly what is a squared. a squared, or let's just deal with what a is. a, oh, well, first of all, all right. I kind of got ahead of myself. Sorry, I was talking a little too quickly. Um, first, let's find out what the center is. Now, remember, the distance from the center to each vertice is exactly the same. This, um, the, the distance from the center to the foci to each fo foci are is exactly the same. So therefore, the center is going to lie directly in between the two foci as well as the two vertices. So you can see that since this is 8 in both directions and this is 5 in both directions, you can see that my center is at 0, 0. So therefore, I'm going to change my equation to x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. There's no h and k. That, well, there are. The h and k are both 0. Um, so we can just write them as x squared and y squared. So again, the distance a is the distance from the center to your vertice, that absolute distance, which is a. Well, a equals 8. The absolute distance from your center to your foci is going to be b, which in this case is 5. So now I can, um, I'm sorry, that is C. I'm getting, ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. So that is C. Um, the next thing now is we still need to figure out what B is. So again, if you remember when we were working on graphing them, one thing to find out what uh, a lot of times what C would be, we'd have C squared equals A squared minus B squared. This is how, the, this is how your foci, your vertices, and your center all relate to each other. So I know what C squared is. That's 25. Uh, let's write it in there, actually. So I know c is 5 squared equals a, a squared minus b squared. So 25, 5 squared is 25 equals 64 minus b squared. All right, so now what I can do is just subtract 64 on both sides. And you can have as a negative. Uh, up, 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 up. 81. What am I doing? That's a um, negative 81. Uh, that's going to give me a negative 41. Equals negative b squared. Then I divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, and I have 41 equals b squared. <coughs> 
No. That's going to be a 39. What am I doing? There we go. 39, uh, 50, 64. There we go. OK. So now that's going to be 39. So that's going to be my b squared, which I don't need to solve for b. I can just plug that in. So I know a squared is 64 plus b squared is going to be 39. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write it into your standard form. Thanks.